Mark Scar, along with my friend Jimmy Coons, to talk about many, many things, including the National Wrecking Company. Jimmy, how are you? Mark, how's things? Uh, good, man. How are you? Everything's rolling around. Just a... Uh perfectly to schedule i must say beautiful let's talk about <laughs> let's start with national wrecking company we'll go from there um yeah, yeah yeah this record um is not out yet but i've been privileged to get a copy thanks to jimmy and um i'm digging it man um this is um a, a classic rock motif but with modern elements as well um this is a project you're doing with your friend randy pratt who, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. does Cactus with you. And uh, tell me about uh, why you guys, you two, decided to get together and do this. Well, we, you know, Randy and I have done so many things together um, through the years out of his studio. And, uh, God, I've known him for about, I think, almost 30 years now. Anyway, we met here in New York downtown. And, uh, um, you know, he, had, he was assembling uh, some hooks and riffs and loops and things like that and taking a completely different sort of approach to uh, song construction, basically. And, uh, you know, uh, he, had met, he kept mentioning for a couple of times um, that he had wanted me to look at some of the songs. So he sent me a couple of the ideas, and I really, really loved it. It was, it was dark. It was heavy. It was, um, there was a lot of room for vocal movement uh, within the um, construction of the songs and the sections and, uh, you know, whatever tightening or extending that we needed to do. Uh, to the tracks, um, because Josh uh, is our engineer, Josh, uh, Jay-Z, Josh Barrow, and uh, Randy, he, they, they pretty much constructed, uh, you know, after they laid down the loops and the, uh, the hooks and things like that, constructed the songs uh, into song form, and then I came in, and it's pretty much the same, similar thing that I do in Cactus, when, <clears throat> you know, when they give me tracks, you know, they'll give them to me, and then I'll, if I say, like, maybe not, not maybe not four times, maybe three times, don't bore us, get to the chorus, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, that's, that's kind of a, that's kind of like the working method, really, as far as a lot of different projects go. So it's worked out really well. We actually just, um, <clears throat> I was out there at the end of last week, last Thursday, and we started the first song on the second record. So, um, you know, we're just kind of fine-tuning the, uh, the mixes, um, the segues, um, and then we're going to, uh, you know, probably be out for, mass release in October, I would say about the third week in October, so I'm looking forward to that. Jimmy, did Randy find the guitar player and a drummer elements for this project as well? Yeah, he, he has a, a, Neil, is a friend Neil is a drummer who's in a, one of his bands called Rickety, uh, one of the last bands that he was, they had together, uh, and I think they opened for, yeah, they opened for us at the Richfield Playhouse or out in Fairfield, Connecticut. Um, when Cactus played uh, a couple of years ago. But anyway, uh, yeah, Neil's a great drummer and uh, very heavy, and uh, he's kind of got that Bonham swing. And uh, and then also uh, on a couple tracks, T.C. Tolliver. Randy got T.C. Tolliver from uh, from Wendy o. Williams and the Plasmatics to drum on a, a couple tracks, and it's really cool because it offers a whole different kind of flavor to the to the track. And so, uh, yeah, it's been really good. You know, by the time I get the stuff... Randy's done all, done all the hard work. Well, maybe not. And uh, he's got two guitar players. One's an old school friend, and one's a young kid that mo was in one of Randy's man in Rickety as well, towards the end of it, and who's moved out to uh, Portland. And so he, uh, he'll he send the, uh, basically the bass and drum tracks, you know. Uh, he'll send them out to the guitar players, and they'll, um, they'll sprinkle, sprinkle all their strat magic or their Les Paul magic on there. And, uh, you know, one, one player is very kind of David Gilmore, Esque, uh, spacey, uh, and the other, and uh, maybe a bit of cost off as well. And then the uh, the, uh, the younger of the players, Jesse, is uh, he tends to he's a really good technician. Uh, you know, he he's he plays blinding riffs, but they're always melodic and they're always very intriguing. I would just put it that way. Talking to Jimmy Coons about National Wrecking Company. Jimmy, tell me about, you mentioned the palette with which you had to work with vocally and lyrically. Tell me about how you approach the lyrics and, and some of the topics that you're uh, tackling on this project. Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, you know, uh, along with Black Dawn, um, it's almost like the, the Wrecking Company record uh, is, um, it's almost like a part two or, or, an, or an extension of uh, 
of the, some of the themes on Black Dawn, but this, uh, the, the National Wrecking Company really 100% deals with, um, you know, how much that we've really stripped the planet and we've really uh, raped the land and we've, um, you know, messed up all of our national, all of our natural resources and we've really taken, uh, we've pushed things so far in a negative direction that it's kind of like everything's in free fall now and there's a spiral of, of just, you know, repercussions going on. And it's hard for being a writer, you know, and, and not trying to be current. It's just, it would be impossible for me to not write about it. Yeah, uh, and vocally, you're just you're just top notch, man. You're just so soulful. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Thank you so much. I, I, you know, the thing you were getting back to your original question. Um, you know, whenever I hear a track, I, I like to just get the the naked track and be able to think melodically and lyrically and uh, maybe even phonetically and and get the right sound of the words. And then everything else is just fine tuning. But um, this record, all the songs came extremely quickly. Uh, they would send me ideas, and I would be on the computer um, or on a phone singing uh, some melody lines down, some some phrasing, some phrasings, and stuff like that. Um, and then we would get out the studio, and then they they were very prolific in coming up with these great great songs. And they would throw me something new, and I would jot down some ideas, go back around to the, where the mic was in the uh, vocal booth, and uh, just start elaborating on it. And, and, pl- and plenty of times that we had sessions, I'd finish two in a day. And he must with be... Overdub, with, with, with harmony over, overdubs and tightening up the arrangements. And then if we needed to send it to the guitar players to sort of, so there's a punch and jab maybe between the vocals and guitar, we would do that. Sometimes we did that, sometimes we didn't do that. So very effortless. That's great, because I was going to say, uh, this is obviously a blast because you're already working on number two. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, and, and we, we, we actually have about four songs left over that we didn't think fit, fit the theme of National Wrecking Company um, that maybe were a little bit more in a pan- piano-driven uh, uh, direction. So, you know, we we might even be getting a second project out of uh, the leftover songs, and uh, like the darker, heavy stuff really belongs to the National Wrecking Company. And uh, you know, we're exploring different ways of uh, of coming up with songs and stuff. I'm, I had sent Randy a couple complete sets of lyrics, and maybe try to do a complete 180 and say, "Hey, write something to this." And because you know, there's about a million and one ways to write a song. Sure. And you know, and, and it can be different every time. <laughs> Yeah. You know. So, who came up with the name? You know, we were we cactus. Were, uh, typically, we stay uh, in around the loop when we play Chicago. When we play, play a club there called Reggie's, and mm-hmm. it's a really cool club. It's like a big. Uh, there's two rooms, and there's a record shop on the second floor. And then the uh, the owner's a really cool guy. He's got a, uh, a dressing room, and it's his uh, house up on the third floor. And it's right where the L train goes right by. And so it's very cool. Um, typically we stay real close to there, but we stayed by the airport, so we were in a bus and we were cruising to the gig and kind of going through town and stuff, and, and I really dig it when you have a chance to get to a new place. Um, I've always been fascinated by architecture, especially old churches. You know, when you see the, the, the you know, in the United States, yes, but, you know, all through Europe, it's terrific. But so, uh, you know, we were seeing a lot of things that we didn't get a chance to see typically because we would be right in right by the club so and as we were cruising by we saw a billboard that said national wrecking company and randy and i had been tracking at the time i said look that's the name of the band right there and it stuck so there you have it they weren't mad at us (laughs) (laughs) uh any thought to touring you know um i just got back uh with carmine and uh and Tony Franklin, we just got back from Italy, mm-hmm. and uh, um, Paul Warren, who's the new guitar player in Cactus, uh, he couldn't make the gig. He was uh, uh, he was booked elsewhere, and um, so uh, the Italian promoter had this really hot shot guitar player uh, over there, and we did a couple of room rehearsals and played a big outdoor biker fest. Mm-hmm. And now there's talk about maybe me coming over and using the same musicians, and they're really really top notch musicians, uh, and uh, and the promoter's really cool. And it's really pretty over there, and the food's great. People are very sweet. And uh, so let's talk about me going back. So if that would be the case, 
I would say that the soonest that the National Wrecking Company uh, music might be aired would be if that happens, maybe October, November in Italy. And I'll also do some Flood the Engine stuff and some Jimmy Coons Band stuff as well. So it gives me a chance to sort of, um, I do that here with my Jimmy Coons Band in New York, around New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, tri-state area. Um, You know, I just kind of take whatever anyone wants to play and and, if, and sometimes I'll get a, a hankering to do some new stuff and stuff that hasn't been done it keeps you fresh you know Sure, certainly. We're with Jimmy Coons. I want to shift gears, of course, because we haven't talked since well before Black Dawn came out. Uh, the last Cactus record came out uh, last year. And, uh, of course, there's, as you alluded to, there's been some personnel changes since then. Of course, Jimmy and, and Pete have moved on, uh, and yeah. you've got some new blood in there. Yeah, it, it's, it really is like a whole new proposition. Um, I love Jim McCarty. I love him so much. Um, and, and he's the reason why I'm, uh, that I'm in Cactus, anyway. Uh, when I was finishing my second solo record, and the guys were out there, Tim and Jim and Carmine, you know, Randy said, look, you should meet Jimmy. Maybe he can sit down, sort of sing, you know, write some lyrics. And, and four, about four of those ideas ended up on the uh, Cactus 5 record. And But Jim, you know, Car- I think Carmine wanted to do, like, an all-star record, get maybe people like Paul Rogers to come in, David Lee Roth to sing Evil, right. and make it sort of like an all-star record. But Jim really pushed to get me in, so I'll always be forever indebted to Jim McCarty if you're out there listening. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, so, yes, indeed. Anyway, oh, yeah. Um, and also then, uh, Jim just, he just cannot do the road anymore. Um, we, uh, you know, we just finished uh, a two-week German tour in May, and, um, you know, we actually had a couple of days off. It wasn't as grueling as it usually is. But sometimes, you know, it's day after day after day, and you're in complete locomotion the whole time. But Jim just decided it's just too painful for him at this point to do it. And I can understand. I mean, it's kind of rough for me sometimes, and I'm, I'm the youngest member of the band. Mm-hmm. Um, and when, when, when Jim decided that... Uh, you know, Carmine and I were talking about who we were, who we thought. I had some suggestions of, of uh, people that I thought would be great. And, you know, he suggested Paul Warren, who's another Detroit native, uh, who actually knows Jim. And he is uh, he is well-seasoned musician. He cut Papa's, Papa was a Rolling Stone when he was 17 years old. Um, you know, in, on the, he got into the Motown scene, and then his career just took off, and he ended up playing uh, most recently with, well, he's with, with the Brian Howe Band as well right now. Okay. Um, and they're doing some gigging, and they're getting ready to go to, go to Europe uh, next month and, in September. <clears throat> and um, he, he was with Rod Stewart for 13 years and with Tina Turner before that and with Joe Cocker. So, I mean, he's played with a lot of, uh, you know, iconic um, vocalists and uh yeah, the stories are good. Fantastic. And, you know, yeah, about the same time, Pete Pete decided that he just wanted to concentrate on the vanilla fudge because, you know, back-to-back dates and tours, um, Carmine deals with things really well. He takes good care of himself, and he's kind of about as young as, as I feel. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, and, and, you know, uh, he lives for the touring. He lives for pretty much everything. And, uh, you know, Pete just decided he wanted to concentrate on, on the uh, Vanilla Fudge thing. And so we have a, a James Caputo is a, is a Staten Island guy that we've known for ages. And he's actually traveled to Europe with us before and helped the band out. And so we got James Caputo in. Um, and then the last couple things that we've done, we have... Uh, We've had the pleasure of having Mr. Toby Franklin from the firm and from Roy Harper uh, and Blue Murder, Carmine's made Blue Murder sure. on, uh, on the bass guitar. And uh, and it's been terrific. You know, it's just uh, it's a whole new it's a whole new shot of adrenaline, so to speak. So, you know, and we can do that occasionally when when, when uh, schedules permit. And it, it's fun. It's been, it's been a real trip to do that with Tony and the band. And everyone really has a laugh and gets along. It's great. Do you think there'll be new Cactus music eventually? Yeah, well, we came out with, uh, we put out the, uh, the last one was a, a little longer coming together. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I took a little break and I went and, and was doing some writing with American Mafia, my friends Freddie Villano and Tom Jude. And we, I did a couple songs on their first record. Now they have a second record coming out. Uh, there's, there's a feeler for it now. I can't remember what it's called, but um, they're great friends, and, and we have a couple songs that we're boiling up right now too. Maybe about two or three songs for the new American Mafia record. So, 
Um, I've been doing that. But, uh, yeah, we released Black Dawn in September, and we did an East Coast tour. And then, we, like as I just mentioned, we did that two-week uh, German tour. I would love to do more dates. Um, and uh, and then I think probably easing into the maybe the winter time when, when schedules ease up. I mean, uh, you know, Paul, Paul uh, um, uh I'm thinking of Paul. Paul Warren, as uh, I know, I'm getting ready to do a gig with Paul Nelson from Johnny Winter's band. So that's what the, that's what was happening in my brain there. But anyway, um, I, I've been going down to Nashville a, a little bit more frequently than usual. We've been jamming and writing down there, and uh, in between him traveling and me uh, doing sessions here, so we've already at sound checks just kind of banged out some really really cool riffs and stuff. And, and put them down on iPhones and stuff. So, you know, you'll be seeing some eventually. I just can't say when at this at this point, you know? Nice. Yeah, everybody's really busy, and that's a good thing. Now, yeah, yeah, a, yeah. another thing, speaking of busy, you are working with Richie Rano. Yeah, yeah, that's been going great. We, um, we actually have a song coming out, uh, the band The Gods with a Z, another Z band, Stars and Gods. <laughs> And uh, Richie's friend, John Gard, asked us if, we would, if Richie and I would like to do a, a track on it. So um, I guess I can tell you, it's coming out in September, and, and it's the track. It's a really cool track called Gotta Keep a Runnin'. And, uh, yeah, and Richie and I put that together. Richie put the bed track together, and I went out to New Jersey, out to his place, and laid the vocal down. And uh, we so you know we we got it in <clears throat> to John, and uh, so that that's coming out. Keep your ears peeled and eyes peeled for uh, the uh, God's Tribute uh, project in September. It comes out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we've been gigging around the town. We're in New Jersey. Actually, we got something coming up on the 26th out, out by where Richie is. <clears throat> you know, we do Jersey stuff out there, and then we'll do BB Kings here occasionally. Uh, you know, when when. Uh, uh, you know, uh, they'll give us a call every once in a while and ask us to come back in, and it's always fun, and it's real close to here, so I'm on the Upper East Side, so it's real easy. Now, are you and Richie going to write? Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, he's been sending me <clears throat> he's been sending me some songs, and he might have they might be out of town. He and his family might be out of town this week, but the following week, I've got a song ready to go, so we'll do the same thing that we did with the uh, God song, and I'll go out to his studio. He's got a nice little setup out there in Jersey, and we'll lay it down. It'll probably only take about half an hour because I'm pretty pretty uh, uh, completist as far as the lyric, this set of lyrics goes and melodies, and uh, and I'm just kind of uh, waiting until I can get out there and lay that down, and I'm sure we're going to bounce some more ideas. We'll probably do a record. Yeah, I'd love to do a record with Richie. He's fed fantastic guitar player a real sweet guy that would be fantastic um yeah in addition to everything else uh, i know you occasionally do the freed thing and i don't know if you're doing the mark three thing anymore or not but you were yeah yeah we're doing our freed live thing we just played on the 30th of uh, july at bb kings we had line there and we had a friend of ours open with us uh, carmen from a band called wiser time did a solo acoustic set um the mark three thing uh the purple thing, right? Is that what you Yeah, mean? yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, I was talking to Angus about getting back in and doing and Greg Smith and, uh, <clears throat> and Mike Sorrentino about doing something. But then, you know, Ted, uh, uh, Greg goes out with Ted and Angus, uh, you know, um, you know, he goes for blocks of time with the trans and orchestra. <clears throat> so I got eventually, if the, if the slot opens up and, and things, uh, all the planets align and we get a gig, you know, here or out in Jersey or in Connecticut or Pennsylvania or somewhere that we would definitely do that because that's a lot of fun, too. So, Yeah, you, it keeps your chops up, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, you know, I love that. I grew up on that stuff. So all, the, all, the, all the versions of Purple, some of my favorite stuff ever, you know. So it looks like we pretty much got the rest of the year mapped out in one way, shape, or form. Yeah, I think a lot of writing, a lot of studio work. We'll finish the National Wrecking Company 2 record. Richie and I will probably, by December, I, I can't see why we wouldn't be six, seven songs in. Uh, the American Mafia stuff will be done, probably three songs with them. Uh, the the, uh, the, the um, uh, God's the God's Tribute comes out in September. And I've, I'm all... all Always mixing little odds and sides of stuff that I've done with uh, <clears throat> little outtakes from Gate of All Saints session, and I've recently found some stuff on tape on Two Inch that I'm going to get in, and I'll probably elaborate on that, and just kind of keeping the archives up to date. You know what I mean, Mark? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
I think we've covered all the bases. I think so. I'm exhausted. (laughs) Time for a nap. (laughs) Yeah, right. That's exactly what I'm thinking. (laughs) Amazing. Jimmy, thank you as always for your time. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, Mark. Thanks so much, man. Hey, uh, you know, anytime, man. Anytime. I'll talk to you very soon and uh, be well, okay? I will. You as well. Jimmy Coons. I'm Mark Scar. Thanks.